Today's video is all about this Hone rolling knife sharpener. Now I'm not coming at this as a beginner. I've already got the Hall 2 Pro and I hope you're going to be as amazed by this home one as I was when I started using it. All right, so the video will be about the device itself, the benefits of the device, how to use it, and then I'll do a summary. Okay, let's get started. Right, so out of the box, you've actually got the rolling sharpener itself. And as you can see, the sides turn around like that, and that's how it operates. It basically runs along the edge of the knife and sharpens it. Now it comes with a 400 diamond grit on one end out of the box, and on the other end, it comes with a 1000 diamond grit. So that's to basically sharpen it, and that's to hone the knife. However, what I've also got with it is, an additional disc. There's another two discs that you can get as well, but this is the ceramic honing disc. And I'll show you how to swap these out. So we'll just pop that down for a moment. And if I get a knife, you'll see there's a, an opening in the side of the roll there. And all you do, just pop your knife or something else into it, lift it up, and the disc just comes out like that. You lift the disc out, and it's a double-sided disc, which is absolutely fantastic. So you've got the diamond, uh, so this is the thousand. So you've got the thousand grit on one side, but if you feel that that's getting worn down for whatever reason, you can just flip it over and pop the other side on. So two 1000 grit sides there. And if we have a look what holds it in place, you've got a near medium um, magnet there. So get your disc, pop it up to it. It's a really strong, <laughs> it's a really strong magnet. Pop it at the back there like that and you'll hear it click down and that's not going anywhere. It won't move or anything. And again, on the other side with the 400 uh, diamond grit, just lift, find the notch, get your knife, lift it up and clean it, exchange it, flip it over. That's what they're there for. And the next thing to have a look at is the sharpening block itself. Uh, some big benefits over some of the other devices out there. Basically works in exactly the same way as all the other rolling sharpeners do. Whereas you pop it down, you get your knife, you choose what angle of sharpening you want on it. So you've got on this side, there's a 20 inch angle. And on this side, there's a 15 inch angle. And the difference on that is the, the harder and the better the steel. So your Japanese type knives, they will hold uh, an edge better. So you could go for a 15 on that. So it'd be sharper and it'd hold it for longer. With the European knives and your cheap knives, you want to go with a 20 degree angle. It won't dull quite as quickly, um, but it's obviously not as sharp, but that's what you get with your different steels. When you've chosen the degree of sharpness, all you do is you get your knife, pop it on, and it adheres with the near medium magnets. The magnets on this are huge. Again, compared to some of the others that I've used, um, that is not going anywhere. The knife just isn't going to come off. With some of the others, the magnets are a lot smaller uh, and just, just not as good, not as fit for purpose. Something else as well that you'll see on this is, again, with the whole Pro, for example, you have a, a rubber front on here so that the knife doesn't get damaged by the magnets. With these magnets, they're inset by about a millimeter. So when you put them on, the knife itself isn't going to get scratched by the metal of the magnet. Anyway, once you put the knife on, it's simply then a case of getting the rolling sharpener, depending on whether the knife's already been sharpened and you just want to bring it back, put some life back into it, you're going to either use your 400 grit or your 1000 grit. In this instance, this, sh this knife is sharp, so we're just going to use the 1000 grit, but when I do these other knives, they're a lot duller. So we'll start off with the 400, we'll go up to the 1000, and then we'll do the 3000 honing. And again, pop it on and you just roll it backwards and forwards. And you'll hear it biting into the knife as it sharpens. And when you've done it a few times, as I said, with the, with the dull ones, I'll go into it in more depth. But we bring that across, turn it round, and then you do the other side. This knife has been sharpened, but it's been used, so it's just taken the edge off slightly. So this is just bringing it back, so no major work needs to be done to it. But as you can see, as I'm doing it, I'm applying pressure 
from the side this way, but the knife itself isn't moving. And that is purely and simply down to the strength of those magnets. Right, let's swap out and put the ceramic horning disc in. Right, so we've got the ceramic disc in, and now, again, just go over it. You can hear it not biting in as much. And obviously the reason for that is, it's not taking much metal off, it's literally just getting the edge down to something that's a lot sharper. Because all the work's already been done by the diamond chip blades. So it's just coasting over it. You can now hardly hear anything. Last one. Okay, that's it. Pop that to one side, we'll get the knife and we'll just try it on a piece of paper. Now I'm going to show you with this small knife how this is better than, well, any other one that I've had. And basically that is because with a small knife, if you try putting that on the big side there, it obviously falls beneath that. So you need to bring it up. And what I've done in the past is you've had to, you've had to really play around with it to get it above the level so that you can sharpen it. However, not with this. If you turn it over, you've got additional magnets there and you've also got a lip. So if we go with the 20 inch side there, now the knife, is on it's nice and solid as you can see there it's not going anywhere and because the edges are chamfered you can also use this without cutting into the into the rubber so with this again all you do you just use it in exactly the same way before i do that though i'll show you on the paper just how dull it is so it does cut it but it drags Let's see it when it's been sharpened. So again, 20 degrees, pop it on. Make sure it's on the lip. And now let's start grinding. You can hear it working its magic. And again, I'm applying pressure, but the knife isn't going anywhere. And we'll flip the knife, pop it over, make sure it's on the magnets. Right, okay, so we've we've done that. Now what I'm gonna do, flip it over, and I'm also going to flip this over. So this number one is the 400 grit, this number two is the 1000 grit. Let's see it work its magic again. Now the one thing that I really like about the rolling sharpeners, you can't go wrong. The angle's set for you, uh, the disc, works its magic. I'm not a neurosurgeon. I don't need a scalpel sharp knife all the time. I do cook a lot, however, and what I want is a knife that's really sharp. And as it dulls when I'm using it with cooking, I can just get something out like this, run over it a few times and get it back to the level that I want it. If I get a knife and it's completely dull, it's gonna take more time to do it, but it's gonna be sharp when I've finished. And then again, use it during the cooking and when it dulls, when it gets to the point it's not as sharp as I want it to be, literally take this out, hone it. There's no need to work on it for hours. Hone it and you're back to using it again. Now with the Hall 2 Pro, I've never been able to do this knife properly because it just, it's so difficult to use on the, on the mount on the hull, but not on this. I'm gonna do one last one and then I'll get the ceramic horn on it. We'll horn that now. Okay, that's in place. And when you finish honing it, get your knife, get your piece of paper and perfectly sharp. Exactly what you want. So that just goes to show the benefit this has over some of the other manufacturers out there. Again, I'm gonna say the Hall one because I've got the Hall 2 Pro uh, and having the ability to sharpen small knives is, oh, it's a game changer. Now, this isn't a, a short knife, obviously, but it is quite a narrow knife. And it's also my favorite pairing knife, but 
because it's so cheap, it, it blunts really easily. So again, if I was to put that onto the 20 degree side there where the bigger knives go, it falls below the, the line. You can see it there, it falls below the line. So very difficult to sharpen. So if we swap it over, pop it onto there, it's now above the line, easy to sharpen, easy to get the rolling sharpener on. And also I'm knocking it at the side there and it's not going anywhere. Same with this, knocking it at the side. So it's staying stable against the edge there. Get your piece of paper and simple as that. So again, this is a, a really cheap knife, but my favorite one brought back to life with the horn. And then once it's been brought back to life, really easy to keep on top of. The larger knives are even easier to use because um, when you get your 20 degree angle, they just seem to fit on so much better. And again, you can hear me knocking it. It's not going anywhere. It's not falling off on the other side as well. So really stable. The magnets are huge in comparison with other models. Really, really good. Something that I didn't mention, you've got this indentation in the top. Well, all you do, you get your horn and it sits on it there. So with, uh, with the hole that I've got, you've got a wooden block and it's either going to sit on top of it like that or sit next to it. Um, so it takes up a lot of space with this. Just pop it on top. Doesn't need to be boxed or anything and it's ready to go when you need it. Pop that knife back and one last thing to look at. So this is my uh, Leatherman, my favorite all-purpose utility knife. And if we open it up, I can pop that on the 20 degree slot at the side there and give that a good sharpen. Something which is really difficult to do on, um, on all the other uh, rolling sharpeners that I've used to be honest with you. But this, it's in place, it's not going anywhere. It'll travel the whole length of it. It's not falling off or anything. That's how strong those tiny little batteries are. Right, and we'll see on the paper. Perfect. I could have done it on the hole, but what you tend to find you're doing is you're supporting it with your finger on one end and with your thumb at the other end, just trying to get it above the plate so that you can do it. So, so much easier with the lip and the smaller magnets on there just to get it really good. Right, let's give it a summary now on the horn. As I said, I'm going to do a Hole 2 Pro versus the horn, and I know which is going to come out better on that. Um, but specifically on this, it's a good weight. The rubber's good, it adheres to the work surface perfectly. It comes with the uh, 400 grit and the 1000 grit. There's another three discs that you can get for it. I think there's a, a 200, which is good for bringing back a really blunt knife. Uh, a 700, which is between the four and the thousand. And then obviously the, um, the ceramic horning disc, this is separate as well. Turn that off. So it comes with the 400 and the thousand, which should be enough. But the more you want to do, the more you can do. The price of this, I think it was £83. So in comparison, the last one that I bought was £349. Um, the base, probably the best base that I've ever had. Huge magnets and the ability to do small knives as well. I can't begin to tell you the improvement that that makes when sharpening small knives. Again, it sits on top. You can get those additional discs in a, a kit for £127 or an additional £127. You get all the discs, you get a, a leather strop, you get some things that will actually change the angle slightly. Even if you had to pay for all of those discs and the horn and this, you're still talking um, under £220 which is exceptional for all that. Or if you want to buy the discs individually, the 21 pounds for the, uh, for the ceramic horning disc, it's 27 pounds. But just remember on each one of these, the double sided, so you've got twice the life uh, and to be able to buy them at 21 pounds, that's nothing. Just have a look how much some of the competitors are for that quality of, um, of knife sharpening, what you have to actually pay. Again, it pops on top there. Sits nice and neatly on a work surface out of the way. 
and um, and that's it. There's not much else I can say other than this is a huge recommendation. As I said, I'm not a neurosurgeon. I don't need scalpel sharp knives. I don't need them that sharp all the time. I just cook and want sharp knives. That's what this does. It gives me consistently sharp knives. I don't need to worry about wetting a stone. I don't need to worry about the angle that I'm sharpening at. This does it all for me and does it all simply. Very therapeutic, but ultimately very sharp knives at the end of it. And that is what I'm looking for. So ticks every box. So I did another video um, and I'll just show you a clip of that to, to explain where I've come from to get to here. When I first started sharpening knives years and years ago, I thought this was what you sharpened them with. Didn't realize that you just honed a sharpened knife with it just to bring the, the sharpness back. So I went through ages with just using that. Then I bought myself a diamond blade sharpener, which is basically uh, just a sharpening stone, but with diamond rather than being the stone. And there's four different grits on there. And whilst it's useful, getting a consistent angle uh, for the sharpness of the blade, very, very difficult. So I thought, right, well, what I'll do is I shall buy something that does that for me. So the first one of those that I bought was this, uh, and it basically works by, you hold it and you sweep the blade through it. And I thought, that's fantastic. That's going to do the trick. And there's two carbide uh, blades in there that are supposed to give it the correct angle. And it works. But what I found out was it actually damages the blade more than anything else um, or the way that I use it, it does anyway. It takes chunks out of the blade. So from that, I was stupid enough to purchase this from uh, seeing it in use on the internet. And the way that works is you pop it down and you slide that through and that's supposed to sharpen it. Same as this, however, these move so I thought, this will do the trick. It doesn't. It does the same thing, just damages the blade. It does sharpen it, but not enough. And I don't like a damaged blade. And then last but not least, um, I bought an electric one with two grinding stones. It was absolutely useless. I ruined a few knives, so I threw that out, so I can't even show it you. And with regard to the honing knife, I did purchase recently uh, a diamond covered one, a diamond chip covered one, which, when you're honing the knife, you can actually feel it biting in more than you can with the normal steel one. 